Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. Here in North America, people are heading back to school and buying school supplies. Now, there are some parts of the school supplies that we can reuse year after year, like binders. But some items tend to come home half-used, and my kids want new ones every school year. I'm thinking particularly of crayons and markers. So I researched ways to use up all those yucky crayon nubs and dried-up markers. Let's start with crayons. First, the most common projects that you will find relate to melting them down into crayons. And this would involve using like a silicone mold in various shapes. There's some pretty cool shapes like Lego people, or some people have used heart-shaped silicone molds to make Valentines instead of giving out candies. Another very common project is to make fire starters. This is very helpful for scouts. You can take egg cartons and put dryer lint in there and then melt crayons on there to make a very effective fire starter. You can glue crayons onto various backings like canvas or cardboard and make shapes. For example, you could make the shape of a letter and you cut the crayons with an X-Acto knife to get the right shape. You can feed crayons into a glue gun to make drips of wax. And this is cool for our teachers who are teaching about pointillism. You can also drip the wax on the back of a letter if you wanted to seal the letter with wax. And you could even make a homemade stamp kind of thing by using a wood burner to burn a design into a piece of wood. You can do some fun experiments with white crayons where you could write a secret message on a piece of paper and maybe the message is only revealed when people paint over the crayon with watercolor paints. You can make a new kind of art supply by melting crayons into a glue stick tube. So this is once the glue is all used up and all you have left is the tube and you could make kind of a fun crayon that's in this holder. You can make Play-Doh from crayons. That'll add the color instead of using other types of dyes. You can make candles out of crayons. Another type of project that I've done is batik. Now, if you do batik with just plain paraffin wax, what it does is it blocks the dye in the place where you paint with your paraffin wax. But if you use melted crayons to do that, you actually get color in the place where the crayons were put. So it means you might only have to put the item into one dye bath, but you would get multiple colors when you use the crayon. I saw some embroidery artists were doing some cool things where they would color on the fabric with crayons and then enhance that design with embroidery stitches. It seemed really popular to make lipstick or lip gloss with crayons when you combine melted crayons with coconut oil. And I thought that sounded like kind of gross, but I watched a lot of videos and it looks like it actually works quite well. And finally, you can always make mosaics with crayons. I saw mosaics both where the crayons were laid on their side and glued down, as well as when they were sticking straight up. Now, if you have crayon bits and you just don't want to make something out of it, there is a national crayon recycling program, and they will take your crayons and melt them down into other crayons, and they'll also make fire starters. Uh, But I think it's much better, if possible, if you could reuse them locally to save the cost and the environmental impact of shipping. However, if you have a lot of crayons, they would be a big help. Now, most crayons are made from petroleum That's not really great for the environment. So when you buy new crayons, you might consider buying those that are made from soy or beeswax. And these are a little bit more expensive, but they are better for the environment. And then there's also, I'll link to instructions on how to make your own crayons from beeswax if you'd like to give that an experiment. Now, moving on to dried out markers. Well, first of all, you might be able to extend the life of your markers by adding some water to them and then putting them in some plastic wrap and putting on the lid. And and that might actually extend the life of the marker quite a bit. But let's say you've tried that and the markers are truly dried out. Here are some things you can do with both the lids of the markers and the marker part itself. 
So for the, the lids, the caps, they are very colorful and I have been collecting them for some time. And I just made a bracelet for myself from marker plastic caps. This project went together really quickly actually. And I think it would be really fun for any trash fashion show or for crafts for young people. So the way I did it was I drilled the plastic caps with my drill press and then I sewed the little individual caps together into a bracelet. And you can see pictures of this up on my blog. This uses a technique called a ladder stitch, which is a very common stitch used by people who do beadwork. And it basically involves having a long piece of string and having darning needles on both ends of the string and then just going back and forth between the tubes uh, that make up the individual marker caps. You could use just any kind of string that you would want, but I wanted something a little which, which had both a little bit of stretch, but it was also really strong. I could have used like an elasticized string, but what I found worked really well was to cut a strip from an old t-shirt that I was gonna use for recycling projects anyway. And that jersey fabric is actually perfect for this bracelet project because it's both stretchy and strong. I saw uh, uh, something, a project like this that I really wanna do at some point, which is to make a bag out of these marker caps using this ladder stitch, but it's gonna take a lot more marker caps than I have right now. Other things that you can do with marker caps are, of course, you can make mosaics always. You can make a jump rope, like those jump ropes that have the plastic beads on them. You can make finger puppets if you put some googly eyes and some other elements on there. And you can also, I saw some really cool necklaces that were made by hanging down the plastic lids, uh, maybe in a rainbow order, for example. Now for the marker part themselves, you can make watercolor paint with those by putting the marker side down in a glass jar and just having either just straight water or some people were putting 50% uh, alcohol and this makes really nice marker paints and inks. And you can also add color to white flowers if you put those in the glass jar with the liquid that you've made from the markers and it might ch change a white flower into any other kind of color that you're interested in. Now Crayola, they have a program to recycle markers, but you have to register as a school. You can't just mail them in as an individual. So you might have to connect with your school to do that. And right now that program is only run in the contiguous United States and some areas of Canada. Also, when you're thinking about buying your next bunch of markers, you might consider more eco-friendly kinds that are refillable so that the plastic component gets reused over and over again. And some brands that have that are called EcoSmart markers as well as Bottle to Pen made by Pilot. Now, when I was researching things to do with crayons and markers, I came across some really inspiring artists who use crayons and markers in their work. The first one is Federico Uribe, and he is a Colombian artist who now lives in Miami. And he works with actually all sorts of materials. It's almost unending the types of materials that he uses, but he certainly has crayons in a big proportion of the work that I saw. He also has like bullets, sneakers, baby bottles, records, measuring tape. I mean, it was phenomenal, the stuff that he uses in his art. And I'm going to post some video interviews with him up on my blog, but I just love the way he talks about things. I think it's very close to trash imagination. And he comes from a place where he thinks we as a society are overwhelmed by objects. And so he is interested in exploring how we can reuse objects to make them disappear into this new world, this imaginative world that we're making, and that would have a different different meaning. And his focus is a bit like mine. It's not necessarily teaching about recycling, but more about thinking about how objects can be used as materials in new ways. 
The next artist who I found out about was Herb Williams. He's an American artist and he does phenomenal things with crayons. I recommend you check out some of his past work. One was called Ring of Fire where the crayons are put in kind of a rose and it looks kind of like a flicker of flame. And then he also made an exhibit about animals called Call of the Wild. There are some artists who carve crayons into little tiny itsy bitsy sculptures. Uh, one is Hoang Chan, and he carves crayons mostly into very popular cartoon characters. He lives in Pittsburgh, and his Etsy store is called Carved Crayons. Uh, everyone who sees these crayons just gets a big laugh out of them. They're super cute. And then DM Chow, she carves crayons into flowers, custom portraits, and all sorts of other beautiful and very tiny sculptures. There is a guy called the Pen Guy, so it's getting a little bit beyond markers, but including markers. His name, his real name is Costas Schuler. He was born in Greece, but he now lives in California. And he loves collecting pens for art projects. And actually, I went to his website just now, and he is currently collecting markers and pens. And he's well known for covering an entire Mercedes-Benz car with pens, and he calls it the Mercedes Pens. And he brings it to events like art car shows and maker fairs. So if you make items from crayons or markers, I would love to hear about your projects. I hope you'll reach out and let me know at trashmagination at gmail.com. Also, if you could leave a review of this podcast, that would be super helpful because we want to connect with more creative reuse enthusiasts because we are a very special group of people and it's just wonderful to connect with people who have a similar worldview when it comes to the creative reuse of objects. So until next time, may you see trash as just another source of art in your life. (laughs) 